It looks like it's 1.30. Okay. So with that, I would like to welcome our guests and thank you for joining our conversation today. My name is Kelly O'Brien and I lead both the Alliance for Regional Development and the Chicago Central Area Committee. The Alliance focuses on the Milwaukee, Chicago land, Northwest Indiana corridor. And the Chicago Central Area Committee was established in 1956 to promote the planning and development of Chicago. So it's really an honor to lead both groups. And starting back in early April, end of March, we started this webinar series. And originally it was called Pandemic Programming, Insights and Information for Today and What's Next. And we were really pleased to be able to um, very quickly, you know, um, pivot to what our members and stakeholders needed to know and to hear from um, decision makers. And now, uh, starting June 1st, we rebranded the webinar series and in an effort to build up toward our annual summit with the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. If you tuned in early, you would have seen on the slideshow that the summit is planned for November. It will be our seventh summit. And the tagline is disruption, driving innovation, and embracing economic change. And I think Maurice, you have a few things to talk about in those, uh, both all three of those categories. And so it's really an honor to have Maurice Williams, who is the Vice President for Economic Development at the Chicago Community Loan Fund as our guest today. And I wanna make sure our audience is aware, you should look on your Zoom screen and there is a Q&A button. So at any point during our conversation, please send questions and I'll be happy to relay them to Maurice. Now, if you're not familiar with Maurice, um, he has provided leadership in a number of community development initiatives, including financial management and capital fundraising. He has been involved in construction of over 1.9 million square feet of real estate. He's a specialist with projects that require active community outreach and ongoing public participation. His expertise include affordable housing, brownfield redevelopment, hospitals, and institutional facilities. Uh, CCAC has worked closely with yeah. Maurice. I'm not sure what's happening there, Maurice, with a couple uh, yeah, the other devices are no, logging in. I don't know what that is either. Go ahead. Okay, so I think just uh, for the audience to know that when the Chicago Central Area Committee was working on the corridor revitalization initiative, you and your team um, were very helpful to the five working teams of the CCAC focusing on the south and west sides of Chicago. So we really appreciated uh, the, the assistance and the guidance that you provided and continue to provide. Yep. And we're really thrilled to have you here today. So first, let me ask, is there anything about your background that I missed and you would like for the audience to know? No, Kelly, that was uh, a good introduction. I was uh, pleasantly surprised you were actually talking about me. So uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a good thing. No, I, I love the work at CCLF and uh, I think you captured it well. My whole career has been about serving, uh, leading and guiding and listening to communities. So uh, I'm glad to be here and particularly working with you and your uh, coalition and the groups that we've partnered with. So thanks for having me. Of course. And for our audience members that may not be familiar with the Chicago Community Loan Fund, can you please help uh, set the stage by really explaining what it is, what it does, and what you do? Absolutely. So CCLF, Chicago Community Loan Fund, is a lending intermediary. We are CDFI, which is a community development uh, financial institution. So we started in 1991, so we're 29 years old located in the loop downtown Chicago on Madison and Wabash, essentially. So we are a community driven focused lender uh, who looks at trying to help communities thrive and be better. Uh, and so CDFIs across the country were designed to be uh, the gap filler uh, between the large um, downtown lenders or regional lenders or national lenders uh, on larger projects. We're designed to focus in on smaller scale community projects, the mom and pop developer, 
the mom and pop storefront owner, um, the startup developer who wants to uh, do affordable housing development, whether it's uh, um, in communities or around several communities. So CDFI serve those purposes. So at CCLF, uh, we've grown a lot. We, we've done almost 500 loans, uh, over $230 million worth of loans over our tenure. Um, we focus on everything from uh, housing to uh, commercial retail, uh, work on co-ops, and then facilities. So I'll talk a little bit about those four categories or sectors that we lend in going down the line here, but our uh, track record on, on the community areas of Chicago, because we focus in on the city of Chicago, Cook County, and the six counties surrounding Cook County is our footprint. So we chose not to become regional or even national as a CDFI, but we wanted to go a little deeper with our efforts here in the Chicagoland region. Uh, and we made that choice about five or six years ago. So in that meantime, we helped produce over 6,000 jobs, you know, leverage uh, $1.5 billion uh, worth of other financing into deals. And we've affected um, over 11 million square feet of um, commercial retail and community facilities around that footprint. So we've been very effective in, in what we are trying to do. Um, we see ourselves as a lender who provides gap funding and we do a ton of pre-development loans, which are the very upfront loans that are the hardest to get. We kind of specialize in those. And then my role at CCLF as the Vice President of Economic Development, I head up all of our commercial lending activities uh, and they, uh, they are a part of many different things that we do, but we uh, go after new markets tax credits. We're involved with opportunity zone investments. We're involved with um, uh, commercial retail for stores, uh, grocery stores, for apparel stores, uh, goods and services stores. Uh, I help finance all of those types of things, but we also do facilities. So it can be a rec center or a community center or a community library, uh, a mixed use project with retail on the first floor apartments above. Uh, and we touch just about every community within Chicago, but the majority of our loans have serviced the south and west sides of Chicago. We specifically target low to moderate income communities. That's the purpose and intent of our mission. Very nice. Now, you know, we're certainly living in a, in a time of disruption and how has COVID affected the work that you're doing? And particularly as we're starting to reopen, what do you say to small business owners and people that, you know, want to make their dreams of being an entrepreneur and open a business come true? Yes, great question. So I'll answer that this way, stick to it. Uh, being a business person is about perseverance first. Uh, it's about arming yourself with the right resources in order to get beyond the toughest of tough times. I've sat through, as you probably have Kelly, a number of webinars uh, since COVID-19 broke out several months ago. And just about all of the other experts that uh, have presented have said, hey, we've lived through uh, now, what, four or five of, of these kind of downtimes, uh, counting back, you know, 10, 20 years ago, uh, even longer than that in some cases. So uh, perseverance is the key. You know, when you decide to step out on your own or to invest in a dilapidated building or invest in a, a fallow piece of land to transform that into something new and more community useful, uh, you got to have the long term game in mind as opposed to the short term game. Uh, because short term, you're always going to run into challenges and problems and roadblocks. Uh, and even doubters who, who uh, doubt that you can actually pull off what you're trying to do. So sticking to it, having perseverance, having the attitude of perseverance is what I'm speaking of. Um, naturally, lots of things happen during downturns. Uh, people lose not only confidence, but they lose their resources, uh, physical resources, financial resources, leverageable resources. So CDFIs like us, and, and our colleagues uh, and many other organizations around the city and the county and the state are here to help you kind of rebound and pick up the pieces uh, where you may have fallen off or have gaps. So yes, we've been affected. Uh, some of our borrowers uh, faced 
tough times not being able to pay our rent because they had to lay off of uh, employees. Some borrowers, you know, had challenges with their landlords because their, their properties were being foreclosed and, and become bankrupt. Um, you know, we're a lender, right? So we understand the long-term goal of things. So we have had forbearance conversations, uh, uh, um, other conversations to withhold interest on loans, other conversations to slow down the principal and you pay some of the interest up front. So our loans are pretty flexible up front anyway, but during this time, we've even uh, found out other ways to be more flexible. So we're trying to do everything we can for our existing customer base and service uh, those who are looking for uh, loan capital going forward. Oh, that's excellent. Now, let me ask you, I know that both the city of Chicago and Cook County have announced uh, special loan opportunities. Is the Chicago Community Loan Fund partnering with the city or the county? Yes, in very, very uh, uh, interesting ways. Uh, we've been asked on, on both fronts to either be a servicer of their programs and or be a lender in their programs. And, and we're choosing uh, to do both and under, under both circumstances. So Cook County has a wonderful program that, that where they started their intake a month or so ago, and now they're about to finally roll it out early July here called the Cook County Community Recovery Fund. Uh, and if you want me to jump into that, I can. The city of Chicago actually has one very similar, uh, which is called the Chicago Small Business Re Resiliency Fund. So both of them have figured out ways to assist uh, existing businesses to make sure that they can stay afloat, keep their employees intact, uh, continue to pay people during COVID-19, particularly the, the, the employees who may have lost their jobs during COVID-19 or because of COVID-19, and then continue to grow. So if you want me to jump into those, I could jump into them now with some basic high-level information for the audience. Please do. I think that's of great interest to our stakeholders. Yeah. So the Cook County Recovery uh, Fund, it's a fund designed by uh, the Cook County uh, for one-time zero interest loans of up to $20,000 for small businesses and up to $10,000 for independent contractors and what they call gig workers. So these are, uh, the gig workers are those who work off of a 1099 contract. Uh, so they're independent contractors, you know, painters, electricians, plumbers, depending on what they're doing, um, could be uh, uh, smaller entities. So they have uh, the requirements that they have, they need to have less than 25 employees, less than 3 million in revenues uh, for the small businesses. And for the gig workers, at least half of their income must come from 1099 uh, contract work sources. And then they have to have less than $100,000 in gross annual income. So the gig workers uh, um, are the ones where the funds are gonna be uh, approved and gone out to first. So this fund is strictly, uh, since it's county related, it's strictly for uh, suburban uh, Cook County. And so your business has to be in suburban Cook County and they're targeting the South suburban region as well uh, to be qualified to get up to $10,000 for a gig worker. And then the same thing for uh, small businesses up to $20,000. And these are no zero interest loans that you receive from Cook County. It's a straightforward process. You go in and put in your application if you meet their basic criteria. And then we, CCLF gets that file because we are the servicer underwriter for uh, uh, the uh, program. We review everything. And then there are several other lenders that we are dealing with who are administering the actual loans of each of these programs. And they work pretty much the same, but the criteria are, are a little bit different for the city program. But the county program is, is it's designed to be rapid relief loans for small businesses, gig workers, and independent contractors. Very, very helpful. Now, Maurice, you know, we have talked many times about development <laughs> in the South and West neighborhoods. But for all the Chicagoland area that, um, that the Chicago CCLF touches, can you help our stakeholders understand, you know, if a stakeholder wanted to build a, you know, let's say a, a six flat or, or some kind of, you know, real estate venture, how exactly does it work? I mean, do they call you up on the phone or how, do, how does somebody get started? 
Yeah, great question. So he's, they can call us on the phone because not only do uh, we help with the loans and the debt financing they need, we, we have a whole technical assistance arm as well. So my team, the economic development team, offers technical assistance. We have a whole nother department, the lending team and our portfolio management team within CCLF helps with technical assistance. So yes, a developer or a uh, aspiring developer who's looking at renovation of a project, new construction, purchasing land in order to build on, they can call us for all of the above. But typically what happens, uh, Kelly, is um, uh, the developer or real estate person who uh, has some wherewithal would do uh, some market research first which is what I typically recommend. So yeah, if you have your eye on a three flat down the street from your home, for example, let's use that as an example. You wanna do some research first to find out, okay, if you should own or if you should lease that property if you're trying to buy it first. Um, so the question then becomes, do you become a resident owner in one of the units and rent the other two units out if it's a three flat or do you just buy it, renovate it and lease all three units out? The question you got to ask yourself, okay, is there a market for renters uh, three doors down from me? If there is, how big is that market? Um, once you understand how large that market is, how many people are looking for apartment rentals, you got to find out, okay, how much are they willing to spend or able to spend, can afford to spend on rent? Uh, and then you literally back your way into the finances of the deal to, to make sure that whatever your uh, trying to acquire the property for, you're starting there on the right foot first. Because after you acquire the property, more than likely uh, you have to put in monies to renovate and do construction on the property, right? And then after you fix it up so that it's rentable, then you have to operate it. So you got three layers of cost related to that one decision. So all of your research, 85% of it, needs to be done up front to know if you can pull the trigger on the acquisition. Um, our team can help you figure out those basic steps from a technical assistance standpoint. Other people can too, which I uh, support that you have. You need a good attorney, you need a, a, a tax person, you need a real estate consultant you know, on your team to help you think through these things. Uh, if, if you're married, consult your wife first uh, or your husband because they're going to be the first people who are in line of interest in this property. And there's a, lots of people you need to surround yourself with, including uh, experts at CCLF to help you walk through the initial process. But if you're coming for the financing from us, for us, it's really simple. We have a whole checklist of documents that help guide you through our process. And you can go to our website right now at cclfchicago.org and look at our lending tab and pull down that basic information that gives you everything I'm talking about now. Well, that is really helpful. I do want to remind the audience, please use the question and answer tab um, on the screen to send questions to Maurice. And we do have one question and it reads, do you provide funding for nonprofit arts organizations? Absolutely. Uh, we support a variety of different types of not-for-profit organizations. And in fact, we specialize in that. Uh, so yes, if you have a not-for-profit arts organization and it's tied to real estate in some way, because essentially CCLF, we are real estate lenders. So if you're occupying a uh, storefront or a uh, building or a theater or- A gallery, an art gallery. gallery. <laughs> yeah, or anything of that type and, and real estate is involved, we help fund that. Uh, we help fund the acquisition of the real estate, the construction and build out of the real estate. Uh, and uh, the only thing that we don't necessarily do is fund the furniture, fixtures, and equipment within the property and or the working capital. You know how much money you need to operate the business. Mm -hmm. But we have many, many partners that we align ourselves with where we can combine our loans, share the risk, and make sure you're full. But we concentrate on the real estate side. So the answer is emphatically yes for that, uh, for that question. Now, Maurice, I know you mentioned a minute ago when you were talking about um, the city and the county that there are loan opportunities at zero interest. We are seeing historical low interest rates, you know, as it, right now. It's, um, what generally are the interest rates that people would get borrowing through the Chicago Community Loan Fund? 
Yes, uh, so Kelly, that varies uh, in terms of the interest rates. So CDFIs are usually a little bit, our interest rates are usually a little bit higher than the standard market. Uh, one, because of the way we receive our funds from our investors uh, in order to make a spread happen and then relend. So essentially we receive our monies at CCLF and any CDFI who's doing lending at an intermediary, uh, intermediary way. We receive our money from investors at a certain interest rate. We put our cost onto that and mark it up and then we relend it out. So typically that's why our rates are a little higher than you would find at a typical bank with Chase or uh, Fifth Third or Wells Fargo, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but typically the range of our loans are anywhere from 6% to 7.5%. Uh, and then we could set up your payment terms either five, seven, 15, sometimes 20 years, depending on what the project is. And sometimes we can amortize your loan a little longer than the term to make your payments a little lower as well. Um, but yes, you, you can find sometimes lower interest rates in the marketplace from other lenders. Um, uh, you know, the, the payday loans and the, the other, uh, um, uh, quick loans and other things like that, I would not recommend looking into because they're going to have exorbitant uh, interest rates and then you're not, you're going to pay a lot of fees up front as well. With CCLF, you, you, you do get a break on the uh, legal fees because all of our legal is done through pro bono and we pass that on to you. Uh, there's very low uh, application fees. Our application fee for not-for-profit is only $150 and for for-profit it's only $250. Uh, our actual points or the actual fees that you pay to take out a loan is generally around 2%. So, you know, we can make it flexible for you and affordable for you to take out a loan with uh, CCLF. That's excellent. And can you remind the audience the footprint of the area that you actually uh, cover? Yes. So we cover all of city of Chicago, all of Cook County, and then the six counties that touch Cook County. So Will, Lake, McHenry, um, um, I forget the other two, but there's six that touch Cook County. So the we Kane cover County is that one? Kane County, yes. I'm sorry, that is one. Yes. And DuPage? And DuPage, DuPage? yes. Mm -hmm. So we cover all of those counties. Any projects that fall, you know, within uh, uh, not for profit and the, the, the for, we do uh, not for profits, we do arts and rec organizations, we do small scale real estate firms, social enterprises worker and food co-ops and community retailers and small businesses within those four sectors that I talked about earlier, which is affordable housing, uh, CRE, commercial real estate, that's uh, small stores and, and businesses through our Activate Retail program, social uh, enterprises, and then um, uh, facilities. So we can touch just about any type of real estate um, in the community level. If someone was interested in the term rates that are available, is that something they can find on your internet, on, on your website? website? Yeah, so we don't list our terms per se on our website, but all you need to do is contact us directly. Uh, and the best way to do that is just call 312-788-2497, 312-788-2497, or you can just go to our website directly. The way we typically want, like to deal with potential applicants is that we like to have a sit-down discussion like this with you first, either over the phone, obviously during COVID-19, understand what you're trying to do, uh, take some preliminary information on your project, on your real estate project. Then if, if that's acceptable to you and us, we send you out a loan application. Once you return that loan application, you understand what our procedures and eligibility requirements are, then we get into a full-blown discussion about terms and rates. Again, that's just how flexible we are. It's almost on a, on a, uh, a la carte basis, we uh, price loans uh, based on what the need truly is. Now, um, one question that I've always been curious about with the work that you do is with the consulting kind of upfront to help somebody understand if they're um you know if their dream is can be a reality yeah, is there any cost for that there's no cost for our technical assistance correct correct and so that's another unique part about uh cclf and i think i saw another question come in about for-profits you may have seen that too 
But yeah, so our technical assistance has no cost. We even actually not only provide the one-on-one -on -one technical assistance, but our full TA staff uh, promotes and hosts um, uh, technical assistance panels for developers, for potential borrowers, for existing borrowers, for first-time developers, for uh, experienced developers. And we have a whole program called the Project Readiness Workshop where we take you through soup to nuts on how to develop, uh, what to do community-wise, how to leverage up your loan, what do you need to be ready to take out the initial loan from CCLF or anyone else, uh, what do you do with legal, zoning, accounting, operations, the whole gambit, and we uh, host these workshops uh, all year long. Uh, I think we do at least six a year that people can sign up for. Uh, those have a small cost to them. I think they're like $25, but you get some of the most uh, uh, expert level information in the industry in those workshops uh, for $25 a, per person. So it's very low cost, but the other technical assistance that we provide on a per, per person basis, per applicant basis is free. Are the workshops, have you transitioned to virtual yes. with COVID? We have, yes. And they've been very successful, I've been told. Uh, so we'll make sure that we alert you of the next one coming up, our next part of our series that is coming up. I, I saw a question here about for-profit. Did you see that one as well? Yeah, so I think that the question is, well, there's one question that reads, what about nonprofit developers and rehabbers? Oh yeah, we that's actually our, our bread and butter, uh, Kelly. Your sweet oh, yeah. spot. That's our sweet spot. So we are here to serve not-for-profit uh, uh, developers, uh, renovators and new construction. So just give us a call or go to our website and look at the lending tab. Again, that's cclfchicago.org uh, and you can look at everything that we're talking about today. But yes, we definitely focus in and service uh, uh, not-for-profit and for-profit developers as long as they're working their projects in low to moderate income communities and they serve low to moderate income people uh, uh, in those communities. And, and switching back uh, to a minute ago when we were talking about the terms, what generally, how long are um, the terms offered? How long are the loans? Yep, so uh, it depends on what type of loans they are. So uh, the housing loans that we do, they can stretch out to 15 to 20 years in the amortization state. The commercial retail loans that I deal with are typically between five and 10 years because uh, they're coterminous with what your lease terms are for your tenants in the projects. So the housing projects go a little bit longer. The uh, uh, arch and recs projects and the facility projects, they can go out a little bit longer. Uh, usually the retail projects are a little shorter, uh, but that's typical standard for the industry. Well, given your experience and with there being so much change in retail, whether it's box stores or a, a mom and pop kind of a store, what are you seeing with retail right now? Yes, so I'm seeing a, a, uh, a slowdown of the, the new activities in re retail and a repositioning of the existing. Uh, you know, again, we talked about that, that perseverance, right? So um, I'm seeing a lot of retailers uh, still in the industry uh, and working their, their projects the way that they kind of know how to do it from a grocery standpoint, from a uh, restaurant standpoint, apparel, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's less of it coming online immediately, uh, but there's a ton of space still available uh, throughout the city and the county and, and our footprint for retail uh, to be absorbed. So, you know, we, I don't think we'll ever run out of places for people to do retail. The question is, is that there's less and less people who are now stepping into that lane in order to be adventurous and entrepreneurial in spirit in order to, to, to do it. But those who have been in it and are vested, you know, they may have had a restaurant in the family for, you know, three decades or so, they're sticking it out because they have a customer base and they know how to social distance and reprogram their parking lots so that they can have more drive through and pick up. You know, they're doing all of those things. Uh, you know, some of the retail is going to be hit harder than others, as we know. Uh, but I think that, you know, 50, 60 percent of it will uh, survive and last uh, once we move out of this pandemic. Well, it's hard to believe that we have um, exhausted our 30 minutes. I knew this conversation was going to go quickly. And just in the remaining 30 seconds or so that we have left, 
uh, what would you like to say to our stakeholders in terms of the ripe opportunity that there is um, currently? Yes, uh, I would say connect up with CDFIs. We are here to serve. Uh, the intent and purpose as a mission-driven lender is to really sit down and roll up our sleeves with you when the times are toughest. And if these times aren't tough enough for you, <laughs> I don't want to say anything other than this. But we are here to serve. Uh, give us a call, 312-788-2497, or visit us at www.cc. LFChicago.org. We have a full COVID-19 resource directory on our website. As soon as you hit the website, you'll see the link for it. It has hundreds of resources for COVID-19 activities, uh, including the ones that we talked about with the Cook County and City of Chicago funds. And we're here to serve with information, with technical assistance, with people, and then obviously with uh, debt funds for your next real estate project. So Thanks so much, Kelly, for having me today. It's been, a, it's been a great time. We'll have to do this again soon. I look forward to doing it again. And I do think it has been a wealth of important information. And for our audience, if you were not able to catch the information that Maurice shared in terms of how to contact him, feel free to email me and I'll make sure to connect you with him. So with that, I'm gonna sign off and remind everybody that we will have um, two episodes next week on Tuesday at 2 p.m., so it's a little bit of a different time, but we're gonna have a conversation with a leader of another multi-state economic development organization that's headquartered in El Paso, Texas. And it's gonna be a really important conversation because the linkages with manufacturing from our Chicagoland tri-state region and the region there, which includes one state in the country of Mexico. So I definitely encourage you to mark your calendars for 2 p.m. on Tuesday. And on Thursday, we'll be back to our regular time at 1.30. And we're going to speak to uh, the top leader of the Indiana Economic Development Corporation, the IEDC. And we'll be able to learn about what Governor Holcomb is doing to support businesses, again, during this, um, the difficult time of reopening and facing COVID. So I really appreciate you joining us today. I wish everyone to stay well, stay strong, and look forward to seeing you next week. Maurice, thank you so much. I really appreciate all your support and your time today. Look thank forward you. to keeping in touch. Yes, bye-bye. Bye, everybody.